specializing in new music and the uh, founder and curator of uh, the Interpretations Concert Series. Uh, I specialize in doing works by living composers and each year for the last 24 years I've given a concert of premieres of new works that I've arranged to be commissioned. The Interpretations Series began 24 years ago in as a result of my having moved to New York a few years earlier from Berkeley, California, where I had a concert series called 1750 Arch Concerts, named after its address in Berkeley, which actually was much more ambitious in terms of the number of concerts it produced, because it was not limited simply to new music. We presented early music classical music, new music, world music, and jazz in any given month. And we had up to four concerts a week from September through June, so we were presenting over 100 concerts a year. So I came to New York and I originally was not going to produce, but I had the same feeling I had when I started my first series, that it's our responsibility to make sure that this music whatever music we do, in that case I was doing early music, but now contemporary music is presented, and presented as well as possible. So in the tradition of what Jim Staley is doing at Ouellette and what Phil Niblock has done over the years in his loft, I found a niche that I thought would be helpful, and that was to take uh, music which at that time, 24 years ago, was, I, I'd, I'd spent a few years in New York listening to everything, and I found myself attracted more to the experimental music scene uh, uh, downtown than the so-called uptown, more academic music, just because those are the concerts that seem to have the most interesting ideas in them to me. But they were often uh, under-rehearsed and uh, oftentimes composers were performing their own things who were not necessarily performers. So I thought it'd be nice to get together a budget and provide these people with uh, uh, enough of a fee so they could rehearse adequately and find a space. Originally we did it at Merkin Hall because I wanted to take this music and put it right up in the uptown area where they had to deal with it and it, it, it had its effect. And uh, did that for a number of years until one year, about five years ago I guess it was, Merkin needed to close for half a year to redo their lobby and Jim Staley was very kind and invited us to present our series in, uh, at Roulette. And then when Roulette moved to this wonderful new space in Brooklyn, uh, I went out and looked at it and decided that I would like to move with them. And that's been great. Since the fall, we've had fantastic audiences and a wonderful sound. Every concert has just sounded fabulous. It's, very, it's a very special uh, resource for presenting and listening to new music. And uh, I'm happy about it. kind of evolved uh, in that uh, I had had in the West Coast also an ensemble called the Arch Ensemble uh, for experimental music uh, that I co-directed with a wonderful composer and conductor named Robert Hughes. But we got this consortium grant and we chose to commission Robert Ashley, who incidentally is going to be in this program, uh, giving this second performance of a piece that we premiered in a very small venue. Uh, where we had two performances that were sold out, but I think the venue held about 50 people, so plenty of people haven't heard it. Uh, and it's uh, called World War III, Just the Highlights. And it's a remarkable uh, piece with very unusual accompaniment. The th three performers who accompany me on it are designated by the composer in the program as playing microphone and they make a set of sounds uh, that he describes quite clearly, where you put the tongue in your mouth is up to make the sound. And there's, there's three of them, 
three different tongue positions in the mouth. And uh, those sounds are timed. They sound like tch, 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 tch. the bombing of the wars. Is the next person to come along and have me do music that involved a commission, I decided it should, was uh, wonderful Anil Lockwood, who I, when the Arts Ensemble toured Europe, we were in the same festival with her, and I'd liked her music, and she'd liked my singing, and she said, you know, she hadn't written anything for fixed pitches in many, many years. She'd been doing sound recordings and, and uh, field recordings and making music out of those wonderful pieces, and using, using glass rods and all different sounds that were not specific pitches. But she decided to write a piece uh, for me and uh, J.D. Perrin on baritone sax and the late Michael Puglisi on the percussionist playing the inside of the piano called Night and Fog, which is, uh, relate, relates to uh, how people refer to the Holocaust. Uh, and it's set poems of uh, Ossip Mandelstam in the prison, prison camps in Siberia and uh, Carolyn Forche talking about what was happening under the oppressive dictatorship in El Salvador. It's funny because the piece that we're doing in this concert, and his piece for this concert, is a setting of poems written by prisoners in Guantanamo Bay. In terms of historically how this concert evolves, as the third of the major composers from my long-time associations. Uh, 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 Alvin Lussier, whose work Kira Leakes we're going to do. This evolved out of the fact that this year is uh, Alvin's uh, 80th birthday year and they had a big festival for him at Wesleyan where he's taught until this year he didn't retire until he was 80. There's a guy who's dedicated to his students. And, um, Luckily for me, he invited me to do an earlier work of his, the first one he wrote for me, uh, called Music for Baritone and Slow Sweet Pure Wave Oscillators uh, at that festival. And when one of the pieces, I was going to do something by Alvin in my concert. And instead of doing that one again, Anne Guthrie's piece, and Anne is one of the younger composers whose work I'm introducing in this concert, uh, doing a premiere of a new piece I commissioned from her. It's for, it includes in the ensemble French horn. Anne's a French horn player, and so she can call on the French horn player to do extended techniques on the horn and know that they can be done. <laughs> uh, it's for French horn uh, percussion, cello, and voice, if I recall correctly. I think that's everybody, really yeah. And uh, it's, uh, the, we use the same French horn player Milan Ostrin, who did Kira Leaks with me when it was premiered, uh, oh my God, now nine years ago, at the 15th anniversary celebration of interpretations. And that piece came about because the wonderful sculptor, Alain Kira Lee, with whom I've also collaborated for many years, performing both written and improvised music at his art openings or art shows, uh, and on stage sometimes as well, because he's a great he really feels a connection between his sculptures and music, particularly free improvisation, but he also liked Alvin's music very much. And so I invited Alvin down to Alan's studio, and there was a beautiful set of sculptures there. And uh, Alvin made drawings, freehand drawings of the shapes of these sculptures, which were generally vertical. And uh, he took the curbs, shapes. The way these pieces work is that the live players play steady notes and the pure waves approach and pass through their notes, making different beating patterns. Uh, uh, there's a whole series of pieces using that idea that Alvin has done over the years, along with his many other original ideas. And uh, the sound, you know, the French horn he thought would be really good for the metal sculptures, and it, it's a beautiful Beautiful, strong uh, uh, piece. 